As the great racing legend Carol Smith once said, racing tyres are the driver's best friends. Those small rubber components are the only contact a car or bike has with the track and have the ability to make or break a race. They undergo intense loads, friction and heat and are often blamed when things don't quite go according to plan. They are also hugely complex to design and produce, with the rules surrounding their usage bewildering to get working properly across a range of conditions. Here's everything you need to know about how tyres and their usage differ across the championships. Tyres play an enormous role in Formula 1 races, and a good understanding from both the drivers and teams of getting the best from them is vital to success. F1 uses seven different tyre compounds, which include five slick variations from C1 to C5, an intermediate and a wet weather tyre. Three of the slick tyres are made available at each race, labelled as soft, medium and hard, and each car must run at least two of those tyres during a dry race. The tyres range in softness. The softer the tyres, the faster the lap times, but the shorter the lifespan whilst the harder tyres will last longer, but take longer to heat and grip up. Teams must balance the desire for soft, quick tyres and the resultant short lifespan with the durability of the slower, hard tyres, and this balance is the basis of F1 tyre strategy and often makes or breaks a driver's chance of success in a race. The wet tyre is grooved, and at full speed, the car can disperse up to 65 litres of water a second whilst the intermediate tyre is more suitable when there is rain but no standing water or on a damp track. Drivers that qualify in the top 10 must start the race on the set of tyres that they use for their fastest time in Q2, often giving the driver in 11th a slight advantage of being able to start on whichever tyre they like. Each driver receives 13 sets of tyres per race weekend from Pirelli, and although Pirelli decides the three compounds to be used, the teams get to decide how many of each compound they choose. In 2022, the rim size is changing from 13 to 18 inches, making the profile of the tyres thinner. This will make them more relevant to road tyres, however having less rubber is expected to make the cars slower. Firestone produces over 60 unique tyre specifications for each IndyCar season to perfectly suit different tracks and conditions. While for each oval race there is only one compound of tyre available, at road and street tracks there are a primary, a softer alternate, and grooved rain tyres all on offer, similar to in Formula 1. At ovals and speedways, the tyre camber is set up so that both tyres are leaning to the driver's right in order to remain balanced at speed when the car is only turning left. On road and street circuits, the suspension is tweaked so that the tyres are turning inwards to help the car turn both left and right. MotoGP's thin tyres are subjected to huge amounts of force around the racetrack. Along a straight, the rear tyre is put under more than 2,200 newtons of force, which is the equivalent of whacking a 224kg weight on top of them. During braking, the front is subjected to more than 2,500 newtons. That's the equivalent of 254 kilograms. In dry conditions, tyres reach temperatures of over 100 degrees at the front and exceed 120 degrees at the rear. Before they hit the track, tyres are allowed to be heated up to 90 degrees. Each rider has 22 tyres allocated to them per race, 10 for the front and 12 for the rear to use in dry conditions, with an additional set available if they take part in both qualifying sessions. In the case of rain, 13 wet weather tyres are also made available per rider. Like in F1, MotoGP has three different compounds of tyres available per race, labelled, you guessed it, as soft, medium and hard, although the actual durability of the tyre compounds vary from race to race. However, Unlike in F1, teams can use a different compound on the front and the rear of the bike in MotoGP, and their rear tyres are usually asymmetric at most circuits, meaning a different tyre compound is used on either side of the tyre wall. This is to cope with the demands placed on the rubber by a specific circuit layout. Typically, the number of right versus left corners, or vice versa, as well as the severity of corner angling, determines which side of the tyre will have a different compound. In NASCAR, cars only have one compound of tyre to work with per race. The tyres on the right side of the car are slightly more inflated than those on the left-hand side by one inch in order to help the car cope with constantly turning left. On tracks that are longer than a mile, each tyre must contain an inner liner that is essentially a second tyre inside the first so that it's possible to keep the car under control even if the outer tyre blows. 
This safety feature helps to prevent serious accidents on faster tracks where there is no way of driving the car out of a dangerous position. Formula E tyres are somewhat unusual in that they are grooved. Even though the cars would go quicker on slick tyres, as slick tyres provide a greater contact surface with the track, Formula E decided that it was more important to be road relevant and create technology that would be transferable to everyday driving. The series also felt that it was wasteful to cart around separate tyres for wet weather. Over the years, the tyres have been made lighter and lighter in order to reduce CO2 emissions from transporting them all over the world. Formula E's low-profile 18-inch tyres are designed to be as efficient as possible in minimising wind and rolling resistance in order to use less energy during a race. The cars do not usually change tyres during a race, and for the 2020-2021 season onwards, drivers only have three front and three rear tyres to use per single event, with the allocation going up to four front and rear tyres for a double header. The WRC probably provides the most variety in conditions of any motorsport series. Which tyres, and how many tyres are allocated to each car, is decided for each individual event, depending whether the rally will be run on asphalt or gravel, and if rain or snow is anticipated. For most events, there are only two tyre compounds to choose from, although for Monte Carlo, there are two compounds of asphalt tyres, plus studded and non-studded snow options on offer. Previously, it was Michelin that produced the tyres for all the manufactured WRC cars, although for 2021, Pirelli will take over as the controlled tyre supplier for the series. So there you have it, a quick rundown on how tyres differ across different motorsport series. Which fact did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe for more videos.